Gotta catch up to Nuncreed. I think he went this way. Wait. I thought this looked familiar. That arch. The sign. This looks familiar, yeah. Maybe we can clear off the snow? No time, Lenkreed's getting away. Hey guys, Delusive Madam, we are back with more Beacon Pines. What is going on? Why is there a town replica? Or is this the original town? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But now we have to find Mr. Nuncreed. I'm... As they rounded the corner to the frozen town square, they spotted Mr. Nuncreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. Oh no. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the wild. Um... Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nuncreed was after. Graham stood confidently at the edge, one oh, arm no. outstretched over the abyss. No, Gran. A wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. This is not good. Juniper, I don't know what you think you're doing. But I assure you, this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, you doom this whole town. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've done. You and your co-conspirators. Gran? What's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave. Right this Mr. moment. Mr. turned back toward the kids. Desperation in his eyes. Listen to your grandma, Luca. It's between me and Juniper. The back held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. Mr. Nuncreed spun back toward Gran, his voice growing louder. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. He trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know that this man's entire life is a lie? If it wasn't for him, your father might still be alive. Mr. Nuncreen winced with anguish. His voice hardened. That's not true. They both now yelled, not to each other, but at fate itself, making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. Walt was like a brother to me. We just had different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. No, that's not they fair. They menaced at each other, both catching their breath. Oh no. Fran. balanced on a knife's edge. Amid a blur of emotions and memories. Oh no. Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed, as if to give him the stage. And in the stillness, he began to... Weep. And in the stillness... He began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. This will all make sense soon, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. Oh no. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll see where their loyalties fall. Juniper, don't. Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. No. Gran! She no. smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. No. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. Oh no. 
That's the boom. You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, then you must be willing to. Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. Oh no. Is it the ice again? had time to spin around and run to Luca. Oh. Her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Grand. Unflinching love, pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. I'm still very That's where they remain. Confused. Fixed in place. Forever. Cause we believe she's grand. But the obituary said that Gran died. So I still don't know who and she so, is. Our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a town brought low by its secrets sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. This can't be the end. Well, that was dire. <laughs> Just like a little bit. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Now, yeah. We just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. We just have to find out how to not blow it up. So, oh, there's still another route because I didn't have an option other than leap. But we're gonna have to come back to this another time. Our only other option right now is MCDC, which is... So this is the one where, um the kid's name uh where the one kid got pushed into the puddle and he started to mutate it's hard it's kind of hard to remember that kid that one right there this one right there that one he gets pushed into the puddle so we're gonna do this one because we have an option beyond it Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left <laughs> we're gonna fly away we're gonna run Luca drew himself not up doing it. and decided to take the only option they had left. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branches. Oh. <gasps> it worked. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. Yes. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Hey, Mr. Kerr. We'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm afraid we have places to be. Come on, Iggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See ya, jerks. <sighs> Fine. We know where that leads them. This way. We'll take the tunnels. The Luca tunnels. and Iggy winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the... What that was, was going all on? he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The what? boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on uh -oh. a surface as hard as ice. Wait, what? In fact, it was ice. Why is there ice? Chapter 5. Signs. They stood silently, catching their breath. Where? The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. What is Let's going on? Moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as we're they here across a snowy terrain. Well, this Iggy's got a jacket. I guess we have an adorable sweater. That was actually pretty badass. Uh, I think we lost him. Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so. If anything, we went downhill. And what's up with the Winter Wonderland? All I know is there's no going back the way we came. Let's see if we can get our bearings. Follow me. Find a way home. Luca, Luca, are you there? Luca had almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. <gasps> it's that bozo cur. I hope nothing bad has happened to you out in those woods. Luca looked at Iggy with hesitation. No need to be rude. With a resigned sigh. Luca responded. It seems like only dangerous thing. It seems like the only dangerous thing in the woods is you. He speaks, the young man of the hour. 
Now, how in tarnation did you end up with one of our radios? Just lucky, I guess. Boy, howdy, you Van Horns are full surprises, aren't you? Me and my parents? I never had the honor of meeting your father, but your mom sure was a handful. Luca winced, shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. We gotta keep moving. Can I go anywhere here? No. It's like maybe it would give me a different path? Oh no. What's the readout? Sit above 258 Kelvin. That's a bit far from last time. Should we report this to Mr. Kerr? Meh, still within safe ranges. Maybe spreading, but it's under control for now. Even a small nudge in the equilibrium could cause a cascade. Dude, relax. There's a few more sites to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. So the ice is spreading. What's all this? Hard to say with all the snow. I think it's a town sign. I almost make out letters under there. What town could this even be? There couldn't be another town this deep in Weepwood. I'm looking at evidence to the contrary. Let's figure out what we're dealing with here. Step one, snow's gotta go. Let's see what I can do. Clearly red. Welcome to Beacon Pines. This doesn't make any sense. We're in Beacon Pines? How's that possible? We ran away from town. How do we get back here? I guess we gotta turn around. Where'd the snow come from? Well, it's been colder than normal lately. There's a pretty big difference between sweater weather and this Arctic hellscape. The puddle we fought at before. It was cold, too. Maybe all of this leads to one source? You think it's related? What the hell's going on? We're gonna get you some answers. Let's keep moving. Guess we have to go this way. So it for sure is Beacon Pines. It's all frozen. Looking down at the frozen stream, Luca could faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. Oh no. Whatever happened here, it happened fast. Fish didn't even have time to run. Or, you know, swim run? I didn't check out these barrels, but I saw them before. This stuff looks familiar to you? It looks like the barrel near the puddle I, uh... Shoved me into, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Why are they out here, though? Crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. Everyone's gone. What? There's nothing here but more snow. There must be an exclamation for all this. We have to keep going. You can look all you want. I quit. Iggy, we have to keep going. You don't get it, do you? This isn't one of your pathetic Hank Atomic stories. We're going to save the day. We aren't even going to save ourselves. My face is mangled. This town is destroyed. And everyone we've ever known is gone. We don't know that. You can't just quit. Do whatever you want. I'm done. Iggy, it's going to be okay. Luke appeared upward at the darkening sky. He let out a long, foggy breath. Faintly, Iggy began to cry. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion, and more than a little guilt. It is getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. Let's just rest for a bit. The boys huddled together for warmth and comfort. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. 
As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, numb. It was a rough day. The way the snow covered everything over, it's kind of calming. Yeah. Ugh, I haven't had time to say this, but thanks. Huh? I mean, it's way from those creeps. I sort of froze up back there. Iggy, I should be the one apologizing. This all happened because I got- I lost my temper. Nah. That's bull hockey. First of all, you didn't know what that gunk would do. You didn't, right? Of course not. And second, stop with the baloney about losing your temper. But I did lose my temper. Iggy motioned sarcastically to his half-deformed face. Obviously. That's exactly what you should have done. Huh? I was being a horse's ass. <laughs> you were supposed to be a horse's ass in response. That's how it works. Iggy, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course! Jeez, you goody-goody types take forever to understand this very basic point. Why would you go around saying cruel things to get into fights? shrugged. Something I do. You're an asshole because you're bored? Sometimes I feel empty. You wouldn't understand. You and Roller are always having a blast together. Laughing and calling that dinky little treehouse mission dinky control. Wept openly. Perfect little Luke of Van Horn. With his perfect little life. My life is not perfect. Every town likes you. Not everyone. Hell, that new girl hasn't even unpacked yet and she already likes you. You have Tish! He wiped his nose with a sleeve. I love Tish. Tish is great. But she isn't exactly the world's greatest conversationalist, you know? Okay, gave a warm chuckle. I get that impression. He cleared his throat as he wiped his eyes. Huh, it must be raining out here. Definitely. He arched into a wide yawn. We should probably try to get some sleep. Yeah. Let's live though for now. Tomorrow we'll get to the bottom of the, of all this. Luca's eyelids begin to slowly drift shut. Luca? Yeah. I always did want to see the inside of your dinky little treehouse. What'd you think? Not bad. I'll give you a full tour when we get back. You know what? That's all Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Oh no. Iggy snuggled in some more. When it comes to worst days of my entire life, this one wasn't half bad. The house smelled of warm bread. Luca was playing with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind okay. Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams, still clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain uh, behind empty eyes. Aww. Yeah? Look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. Well, yeah, like we remember things differently. The picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing yeah. the facades that one can build given the right materials. Well, yeah, that's kind of how memories go. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories, all warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Remember what? Snatch snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. The day he chose to abandon us. Cho chose to? Turned to look at his father, still lounging on the couch. That's Wait. not true. He didn't abandon us. Yeah. The no, I don't think he would choose to do that. Dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Well, let me show you. The world flickered and pulsed. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger uh -huh, uh -huh. walked into the room. Now, now, we both know that's not how this went. He grabbed Wait, what happened then? and guided the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. 
It was his parents. Oh no. Fighting. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. He could see what? the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Do we fight? It? We can't afford to get involved in this. She was scared. What is happening? His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do? Just watch? There's a sickness in this town, and we both know who's behind it. I uh. swore an oath to help people. I mean, yeah, Walt has to, Walt has to help people. I he has to do it. On them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. They really should have tried to leave or something. His hand from his shoulder. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Eleanor raised her voice. He has, he has his motives. Spare me your bullshit platitudes. <laughs> what about our son? Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Uh oh. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca, is that you, buddy? Uh oh. With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom? Dad? What's going on? Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Not Why are you guys ugly. fighting? Your mom and I just got a little overexcited, is all. Yeah, Luca just a little excited. The scope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. It sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed are the you... device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. Business? I'll be back where in time to tuck you in. Oh, wait, Luca where do you have to go? Tightly. Promise? Walt stood did he really die, or did he just the leave? He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. With a wink and a grin, he put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. A figure approached soundly Who is that? from the foggy snowfall. It stood above them, lingering in contemplation. Slowly raising one hand above Iggy, it snapped out two brisk wraps on his head. <clears throat> from a deep slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. <laughs> Get your hands off me. Whether it was the calming presence or the recognition that he was not in danger, Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. Just what do you think you're Luke doing? Up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. Who is this? Yes, you certainly have caused a lot of commotion. What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Iggy. We were asleep, mind your own business. You're the one running around knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Huh? Oh, I see. You think you're better than me, you? When it came to complete strangers, Iggy had trouble cobbling together an insult. <laughs> you big-hatted, scarfy-necked, furball. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all calm down. Who are you? A friend. An observer. A hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibility. Great. How about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. Iggy huffed with gratification. <laughs> How about you make a little Nat and buzz off? Very well. Nat began to turn away indifferently. Wait! <laughs> Nat! Wait! <laughs> Do you live here? I might say that. So you know where we are then? You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. You gonna help us or not? Before knowing how to leave, we must know where they are. Alright, that does it! Luca, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here one way or another. Iggy turned sharply and began to stomp off. Wait, it, but Iggy... Enough with the riddles. Iggy, wait up. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Nat relented. Very well, I suppose this isn't the time for metaphors. Show you how to get back Luca home. And Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. Come here. 
Nat took a deep breath in. Close your eyes. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. Okay, open them. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat. We don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate in Leapwood? Or we teleported to some alternate universe? Or this is all just some crude experiment by Kerr and his goons? This is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less fanciful. <laughs> just give it to us straight. So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original, true Beacon Pines. We both grew up here, but the town you've called your home for the past several years is a replica. A remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair, but a replica nonetheless. That's impossible! That's too much work! You need a whole town to replicate a whole town! Indeed, to pull off such a feat would require immense labor power. But which could be moved would be moved. That which could not would require a precise duplicate. We would have noticed. Some would have noticed. You think so? Unless the auditing was impeccable. A mind-numbing attention to detail. As for the innumerable trivialities which complete the tapestry. Well, you can leave that to this miraculous thing we call a brain. It has a real aversion to discontinuity. A revulsion, even. The brain has a wonderful way of, so of smoothing out the rough edges, keeping us sane. Luke and Iggy looked around uncomfortably. <laughs> so you're saying that someone made an entire new town and moved us all and no one noticed? Precisely. But why? Why is the only question that can never be answered with certainty. The best one can do is to uncover. Nat narrowed his eyes, furrowed his brow, and uttered. The source. <laughs> why do you say the source like that? Why indeed? You could begin to laugh uncomfortably. It's all ridiculous. There's no way they he could. down at his feet. His eyes started back and forth in contemplation. With a sudden pain, a thought struck him. If this really is home... He sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Iggy. It's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through Weepwood. Chapter 6 Alright, I gotta leave that part there. So that really is original Beacon Pines. That's crazy. Like what I what happened? What caused what what is the source? What how did this happen? I hope you guys are liking this story and series and I can't wait to find out what else is gonna happen in this. It's just ah ah <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.